Gracious Word presented by Church of Christ Hello viewers we welcome you to this Voice of Truth program we encourage you to join with us for a in-depth bible study our today's lesson will be delivered by brother Jerry Bates of World Evangelism also the associate editor of the Voice of Truth international magazine come let us hear the word of God Thank you for joining us today on this TV program for a brief study of a bio of the Bible. I'm Jerry Bates from the United States and I'm glad to be able to join you today. In Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 10, we find an interesting verse. There the writer of Hebrew tells us that God is not unjust to forget our late work and labor of love which we have shown towards his name. Notice this, that God is not unjust to forget our work and labor of love. You know, we as human beings forget many things. Every day we forget things that we should have done. Most of those things is not really inconsequential. It doesn't really make any difference. But many times we forget things that are truly important. And oftentimes we act as if God is just like human beings. And since human beings forget, then we think God might forget too. But this verse encourages us to realize that God will not forget. God will not forget what we do. Now the word forget that really carries the idea of being neglectful. Being neglectful of doing some things. You know, again, we as human beings are often neglectful. We know what we should be doing, and we truly intend to do it someday, but we never seem to get around to doing it. We neglect doing things that are really important. Oftentimes we neglect doing other we doing things that we should do, but for some reason we don't. We do other things rather than those things that are truly important. But here we find that God is not unjust to forget or to neglect us. Now what are he going to forget? He says he will not forget our work. The things that we do for others. You know, we as human beings, again, are often neglectful. The writer of Hebrews talks about several times that we've been neglectful of things. In Hebrews chapter 5 and verse 12, it tells us that we some Christians have neglected to grow as they should. He goes on to say in the next couple of verses that they should be teachers, but they're not able to teach. Why? Because they have not grown. Now, it's not the fact that they were not smart enough to grow or that they did not have the resources to grow spiritually. It's just that they were neglectful. They just did not do it. They should have done it, but they didn't. In chapter 2, in verse 3, the writer of Hebrews again encourages us to not neglect so great a salvation, a salvation that offers us eternal life, forgiveness of our sins, Many times we neglect doing that. We know we should, and we truly intend to do those things someday, but we never get around to it. Many years ago, I remember talking to one man several times, and I asked him more than one occasion, when are you going to obey the gospel? And he said, oh, I will, I will someday. But that day never came. He died before he ever obeyed the gospel. He neglected his great salvation Chapter 13, verse 2, again, we find the exhortation, Do not neglect to show hospitality or to entertain strangers. He said, By doing so, some had even entertained angels. Again, it's easy for us to neglect doing good to others. But God will not neglect. God will not be unjust to forget our work and labor of love. You know, God has always promised to remember what we do. God will remember even the very smallest act. In Matthew chapter 10, verse 42, we find that Matthew talks about Christ saying that God will not, even a little cup of cold water given in his name, God will remember. Now I can think of a few things more seemingly inconsequential, at least to us, than just giving a little cup of cold water to someone. But yet even God will not forget even that little small act. Now, well, God will not forget a small act, certainly what will he do to a large act or many large acts? 
Yet we can rest assured, God will reward us for what we do. For what we do in His name, God will reward us. But notice also it said that God is not unjust to forget His work and labor of love. Labor of love. These are things that's done to fellow Christians. And when it's done out of love, that means you do it with no sense of trying to get something in return. You know, oftentimes we do things for others. And we in our mind think, well, maybe one day they'll help us. I'll do this now to put him in my debt in some way or another. Because in the next week or next year or sometime, I'm going to need his help. And therefore, I want him to help me, so now I will help him. You see, that's not really done out of love. When you do things out of love, then you will do it with no sense of trying to get something in return. Oftentimes you will get something in return, and that's good, but you may not. But when you do it with a sense or with a hope of getting something in return, then it's not a labor of love. So we need to be very careful and realize that many of the things that we do are not really done out of love, because we are hoping to get something in return. We need to do things out of love. Do things for others that they need. If we get paid back in some way or the other, then that's good. But if we do not get paid back, that's okay too because we're not doing it to get paid back. We're doing it out of love. And when you do things out of love, you really do not care whether you get paid back or not. So God is not going to just to forget or neglect to reward us of the good things that we do. God will not forget. Oh, this should encourage us a great deal to do the good things we need to do in this world. To do the good things that God wants us to do for his fellow Christians. Because we can rest assured, God will not forget. God will reward us. And that should it greatly encourage us. But you know, there's one other thing we need to remember that also is a great encouragement. And that is God does forget some things. God forgets our past mistakes. God forgets our past sins. In Hebrews chapter 8 in verse 12, there he quotes a verse from Jeremiah 31, talks about a new covenant. And he says that in this new covenant, no longer will God remember our past sin. No longer will God remember our lawless deeds. Again, this is a great contrast to man. Oftentimes, we forget the good things that a person does, but we always remember his bad qualities. We always remember the bad things that he's done. You know, all of us do some good things, and we do some bad things. None of us is perfect. We all do many things that are sinful against God, sinful against our fellow man. Fellow man may oftentimes remember the good, bad things that we do. But we can rest assured that if we're truly faithful servants of God, then we have the promise that God will not forget our good things, but he will forget our sins. He will forget the lawless deeds that we have done in violation of his will and in consequence to others. Now, is not that, that a great encouragement? To be faithful Christians, trying to serve God the best we can, in spite of all we can do, we know we're going to commit sins on several occasions. We're going to mistreat others. We're going to hurt their feelings. We're going to do various things to hurt others. Not necessarily because we want to, but we just happen to do it that way. Well, God will not, well, God will not forget our good things, but he promises to forget our bad things. That means when we stand before God in judgment, then we can rest assured that we will stand in his sight, pure and justified through the blood of Jesus Christ. Because through the blood of Jesus Christ, God remembers our good things, but he does not remember our evil deeds. This should be a great encouragement to us. Therefore, this morning, I encourage you to look at your life and make sure you're doing good, the good thing. And never get tired. Never give up. Because God will not forget your work and your labor of love we've shown to others in his name.
I hope this will be a beneficial encouragement to each one of you. Maybe I'll be able to join you again sometime. Thank you. Happy to invite you to the Voice of Truth International Small Bible Study, a short meditation. We would like to encourage you to write to us or call us to receive a sample copy of Voice of Truth International English Magazine. International writers are writing in that one. If you would like to receive our copy, kindly write to us. We are studying a series of lesson, Why We Believe. Today, let us meditate why repentance is so necessary. What the Bible talks about repentance. Repentance is a Bible subject. It means to have change of mind. A change, of course, which leads to a change of life. At the same time, repentance is more than just feeling sorry for the wrong that has been done. Sorrow would be included in repentance, but one might be sorry for his sin because he got caught. In that case, he still needs to be repent or quit that which is bad and wrong in his life. 2 Corinthians 7.10 The next point, the Lord defined repentance in the story of the man had two sons. Kindly read Matthew 21, 28-32. His first son said, I will not. But afterward, he repented and went to do what his father said. His second son said, He will go and he went not. But why repentance so necessary? Because the world is so full of sin, unrighteousness, ungodliness, immorality, works of the flesh, sin in the mind, in speech or in one's life. It can destroy. So repentance is very much necessary. Romans 6.23 In Galatians 6, 7 and 8, Whosoever a man soweth, shall he also reap. Old Testament period, God pleaded with Israel again and again to turn away from wickedness and to walk according to the will of God. Repentance was one of the condition of pardon. Acts 8, 36 through 39. Acts 17, 30 and 31 clearly says, Now commandeth all men everywhere to repent. 1 Peter 3, 12. But what about Christian who falls? away our sins. That means that sin has hidden the Lord's face from him and the only way sin can be removed or forgiven is for the wrong to repent of his sins, confess his fault and to ask the Father for forgiveness. Acts 8 14 to 25. Read James 5.16. So, repentance is necessary to receive the forgiveness of sin and to receive the blessing of God. To study more about the Jesus Christ is death and burial and the resurrection. Repent from your past sins 
and confess the faith on Jesus Christ and be baptized for the remission of your sin. Lord will add you to his body, the church. Thank you for your patience. Continue to listen more. Thank you. Be blessed by studying the word of God. To receive the Voice of Truth International Magazine and to study the Bible systematically through our English Bible Correspondent Course, kindly write to us. Our address, Gracious Word, P.O. Box 15, Arsredi Madurai, 625016, Tamil Nadu. For more details, dial 9244204420, 9244214420. God bless you. The Church of Christ salutes you. Joy Creative Production For video coverage and editing, audio recording and editing, promo for advertisement, graphic design. Contact 9042494996